Go love your own enemies. Don't be loving mine. My enemies are the theocratic fascists. I, I don't love them. I want to destroy them. child made in the image of God. Oh no, you're not. You're a faggot. And you can't join your church and you can't go to heaven. This is disgraceful. It's inhuman. So who created the sunset? You, you ask a Christian that and they're going to say God did. You ask a Christian who created a newborn baby, they'll say God did. You know, any anything, you point to a beautiful mountain and I ask, how did that get there? They'll say, God did. Anything that's natural and has a natural explanation, Christians will say that God did it. Okay, so miscarriages, which is the natural, <clears throat> the body naturally aborting a fetus. Naturally aborting. It's natural. It's nature. Did God do that? God did that? Because it's nature. It's natural abort. It's the body naturally expelling a fetus. Naturally rejecting a fetus. The key word here is naturally. Christians like to say that God is the cause of everything that's natural. Everything that has a natural explanation, it's really God. So God is the cause of miscarriages that happen naturally. Miscarriage is the spontaneous loss of a pregnancy <clears throat> before the 20th week. About 10 to 20 percent of known pregnancies end in miscarriage. But the actual number is probably much higher because many miscarriages occur so early in pregnancy that a woman doesn't even know she's pregnant. So, let's see. <clears throat> let's review. Abortion is bad because God doesn't, doesn't say anywhere in the Bible. In fact, the Bible shows God killing, <clears throat> excuse me, killing unborn babies and killing children and babies and pretty much everything. <laughs> It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that abortion is bad, but according to Christians, God doesn't like abortion. But, if God is the cause of miscarriages, and miscarriages account for 20 to, 10 to 20 percent, and that is probably a low-balling number, probably much higher according to this article, then isn't God the greatest abortionist doctor on the planet? Isn't, isn't God the, the cause of more dead fetuses than anything else God is God commits abortion on a staggering scale I mean it doesn't even you can take all the abortion doctors on the planet and combine them together and God has committed more abortion than any other force on the planet assuming he exists you know if Christians want to attribute natural phenomenon to God, then I'm sorry, that carries on to natural miscarriage. God is causing babies to die at a staggering rate. God is. God is. If there's, if you know, the logic has to continue, God is. So, I'm sorry, you guys that want to use the Bible as your, you know, God, God doesn't, wave that Bible in the air, God doesn't like abortion. No, you don't like abortion. Co conveniently, God agrees with everything that you think. If you don't like gays, God doesn't like gays. If you don't like abortion, God doesn't like abortion. Isn't it funny how he agrees with everything that you think, right or wrong? God agrees. Yeah, Hitler thought that God agreed with him, too. Isn't that, isn't that an interesting coincidence? That wicked people can also think that God agrees. You know, 
mothers that drown their babies in bathtubs because God told them to. God agrees with this. I'm only, you know, I, I, I think it's right, so God does. It's just funny how they always go together, isn't it? So yeah, um, <clears throat> I, I wanted to look up this verse too, so hang on a second. This is very unorganized. Um, let's see. I should have had this prepared. Yes. Ah, let's see. This little verse in the Bible. Everybody, Christians, like to use the fiction book to... I don't know why. I'm not exactly sure why they like to quote sentences from a fiction book as if somehow that validates their opinion or has any relevance whatsoever. But let's look at Hosea 13, verse 16. The people of Samaria must bear the consequences of their guilt because they rebelled against their God. They will be killed by an invading army. Their little ones dashed to death against the ground. Their pregnant women ripped open with swords. Is that, isn't that kind of like a really messy version of an abortion right there? I mean, I can't think of a more horrific way to commit an abortion on somebody, killing them at the same time. Yeah. So, that's um, the New Living Translation. The King James Version is, Samaria will bear her guilt because she has rebelled against her God. They will fall by the sword. Their little ones will be dashed to pieces and their pregnant women ripped open. Nice. So, let's see. God commits more abortion than any other thing on the planet. And in the Bible, God commands little babies be dashed against, what else, whatever, ripped, dashed to pieces. However you want to do it. I don't think it really specifies, but dashed to pieces. Let's try to, just for a minute, try to imagine going into a maternity, um, a maternity ward in a hospital. You know the room that has all those little babies in there? Imagine going, imagine a couple armed men with swords and shields and armor striding into that room, seizing those little babies by their feet and banging them or whatever, doing whatever they need to do to dash them to pieces, to break them up into pieces. Little babies laying there in their cribs. Try to imagine that scene for a minute. Imagine the blood splattering on the floor and on the walls and the screams of the little babies as they're wielded, as they're, as they're flung about. <laughs> little babies dashed to pieces, commanded by the God that you worship, Christians. The God that is so loving and merciful. And if that isn't bad enough, these same, these same guys going into the rooms where the women are, some of them may be in labor, others of them you know, maybe in there because they're having complications, taking their swords, plunging them into the bellies of these women, ripping them open, hauling the babies out if there's, if they're, yeah, whatever, making sure that those babies are dead. This is, this is your God. This is your God commanding not only the death of little babies, little ones, what else are you going to interpret that as? Little ones dashed to pieces, or abortion. He is, he is commanding abortion. There's another verse in the Bible where he actually, there's actually a concoction that is put together to see if, a, that will cause a woman to have an abortion if her baby isn't her husband's. So yeah, there's even instructions in the Bible on how to cause a woman to have an abortion. So I'm sorry, Christians, your God is not pro-life. Your God is anything but pro-life. It's just, again, interesting how you attribute your, what you think is right and wrong. You attribute that. That's what God thinks. Anything you think is right, God thinks is right. Anything you think is wrong, God thinks is wrong. God is just a mirror of yourself. He is a reflection of yourself. 
all the best qualities that you think is you think are good qualities that's God that's God <laughs> don't you don't you think that's a little bit of a coincidence you know the Bible is supposed to be the Word of God if you really want to know your God you're supposed to read the Bible and you don't you know why you don't you don't really want to meet the real God the one the one I don't want to say real because there isn't one but the God that your cult is based on is in the Bible you don't want to meet him you don't want to get to know him you want to imagine him the way you want to imagine him however you want to imagine him that's what you want you don't want to read about the God that your cult is based on. You don't want to get to know him. You don't want to see the truth. You don't want the truth at all. You run from the truth in every every imaginable way. Your Bible is right there in your house. I read the Bible many times as a Christian just kind of, you know, I highlighted things and I kind of gravitated to those things that I highlighted because I really agreed with those things that I highlighted. That's the other thing. You, you highlight what you agree with. Isn't that interesting? You pick out from the Bible all the things that you agree with. That's the Word of God. You ignore all the things you don't agree with. Flip through your Bible right now. Notice how much more pages and pages and pages of your Bible are just untouched, not marked on, not highlighted, just, you know, you haven't, you haven't acknowledged those pages in any way at all. Compare how many unmarked pages you have in your book versus highlighted pages. Interesting, isn't it? How there's so much, I mean, if you take all the pages that are highlighted, you might, you might, you might, you might do that a little bit. Versus this. Interesting, isn't it? The major percentage of your book that you just, hmm, eh, well, whatever, yeah. It wasn't until I read the whole thing. I read the whole thing. I had not only read it, but I made myself read it like somebody who didn't immediately believe in the things that I had believed in my whole life, hook, line, and sinker. I read it objectively. I read it like I didn't immediately assume everything it was saying was true. Like, God exists. That's a given. I'm just going to assume this. Jesus was his son. That's a given. I'm just going to assume this. Jesus existed. That's a given. I'm just going to assume this. I stopped doing that. I tried to imagine these characters like I'm just being introduced to them for the first time, and I read the Bible objectively. Even the parts that weren't highlighted I don't understand how any Christian, could, any good person, could read the Bible, read sentences like this, and really think about what this sentence is saying. This, this command from God to do this to little babies and pregnant women. Anybody could read the Bible objectively, read this stuff, seriously think about it as they read it and still want to worship such a god you're too busy no he agrees with everything that i think is good and pure and wholesome that's what you want to do you don't want anything else you don't want to meet this guy you just want him to be the loving father in heaven who looks down upon his children and knows the hairs on their heads and values them more than the sparrow all the platitudes that you find on little plaques <laughs> christian bookstores that's the god you want you don't want the guy in the bible you really don't want him and it's funny the longer christianity goes the further it goes into whatever the more it becomes something that isn't remotely related to the bible totally does not resemble the bible at all so, anyway, this kind of got a little longer than I wanted to say, but the point is, your God is an abortionist doctor. He's an abortionist. He commits abortion more than any, more than all the doctors on the planet. 
that would be your God. And on the subject of death and <clears throat> doctor-assisted suicide, what about all those natural deaths? God-assisted deaths. I mean, God kills, if, if, if they're dying by natural causes, that's God committing de those deaths, isn't it? So, you know, well, how, much, how much of the natural world do you want to give God credit for? <laughs> Diseases? Cancer? You know, all the, all the little children who die from horrible illnesses, they never even get to live? God did that. Yeah, he's got a special purpose for them. He wants them in his little children's angel choir. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. If you've been watching, thank you. Bye. I am uh, absolutely convinced that the main source of hatred in the world is religion. And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. Share the same.